We are recording. We are going to, oh God, we paused it right up now, haven't we? We're good here. Right, mate, anything you just don't want to talk about? You don't have, obviously, you don't, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't feel pressured, you have to. Um, it's just really just talking about your, your past. We just roll with it. You know, we've known each other long enough now to roll with it. Super. Okay, here we go. Let's get live. Three, two, one. Hey guys, how are we doing? Welcome to another episode of Real Life, Real People, Real Success. And I've got the comeback kid, John, <laughs> with me. John, John has been probably working with me since I started the brand, the Daz Coach, about two and a half years ago. Yeah. You say, yeah, I'd say. John, just give everyone an intro, quick, um, a, like age, um, your job, roughly where you are in the country, and uh, how you know me. Uh, so, uh, John, uh, 47, uh, married with one daughter who's six years old. Um, so what do I do for a job? I work in learning and development, so I'm a coach, uh, and I deal a lot with um, training other people how to do stuff. Um, so I'm currently doing that in, the, in financial services, um, but I've done it in all sorts of different, different organisations and different industries. Um, I'm based in Scotland, although I'm originally from Yorkshire, from Leeds. Um, and how do I know James? I know I came across James when I was in the in the depths of depression, sitting on my sofa for about I must have been like a th third or fourth month in a row, um, and without thinking, signed up to do a 28 day challenge, and uh, that has been pivotal. Uh, in, in in changing my outlook and the way that I approach things and getting me out of that out of that 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 dark place. Right. So there wasn't a five day challenge back then, was there? No, I think we did. I, I went straight in for a twenty eight day challenge, and then I did a six week challenge as well. I think after that, um, and I did. I lost a stone in the first twenty eight days, and I lost another stone in the next six weeks as well. Oh, I remember um, now. Yeah, it was twenty one days to six weeks, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 21 days, yeah, not 28. 21 yeah, so. I think were you were my first ever program. I, I don't know. I don't, you made it look like you'd been doing it all, the, all your life. <laughs> well, I had. I had been doing it a long time, but like just face to face, right, with the business and stuff that was going on there. Um, and then moved to online, which was completely different. But anyway, um, mate, thanks for coming on. Um, it's really great to have you on board to share your story. Um, with everybody and it's a great story. So we're going to go through um, our, our questions. Um, so first question is, what was your bad place and what did life look like during that bad place? And again, just to give some people some background on what real life, real people, real success is all about. It's really about letting and allowing other people who feel that they're the only person in that position mentally emotionally physically that they are not the only people in that mindset they're not the only people that are going through what they're going through um and i really have brought a lot of people on board who have been with me who train with me um and their journey from that rock bottom place where a lot of people might be right now to a place of, of success right um which is why we're going to talk about your backstory now thanks john cool so um it's a, it's a it's a weird story. So I, I was uh, I've always been always been quite active, always quite sporty from a very early age. I was I was doing lots of uh, I was I was big into football, athletics. Um, uh, when I was at school, it, everything was really structured. Everything was really organised. Parents really pushed me to do to do well in all sorts of different different areas. Um, and then when I when I managed to get, get to university, just having no structure and no no direction whatsoever everything just sort of fell to fell apart really um and i got involved in all sorts of stuff i uh, really enjoyed but shouldn't have been doing um, <laughs> um and after that it was all i was always playing catch up um and, and getting to a place where i thought my parents were uh, happy with what i was doing getting back onto a sort of parity with my friends in terms of performance and jobs and all that sort of stuff and it was sort of getting getting back to normal. It took a long time to get that get get back to where I thought I should be. And then more recently, like in 2012, I did I did a um, I did a, a really long bike ride uh, for charity. I did a nine day bike ride, um, and 
I lost a load of weight. I was, uh, I was, I was a, a real racing snake. I was, I felt really good, and uh, that was the year me and my wife got married. And everything seems to be going, going, going really, really well. Um, I could eat whatever I wanted because I was used to burning off thousands of calories uh, at yeah. the weekend. Um, and then I, I, I finished that that bike ride and all the training I was doing around that, and don't just carried on eating, just carried on eating, and 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 got rid of the routine that I was in and all that sort of stuff. And then lots of little things, not, well, not little things, but lots of things happened one after the other. So my dad got diagnosed with um, Alzheimer's. We had a baby daughter, uh, which was fantastic, but didn't realise how, how much of an impact that had had on my life. Um, uh, my dad passed away. We moved house. We nearly lost the house to a fire that happened next door. All sorts of different things. Um, and I think it just gradually just chipped away at me chipped away at me and I just got gradually worse and worse and worse in my outlook on life. Couldn't find the good in anything. Couldn't, I couldn't be happy. Couldn't think properly. Yeah. All, all I could say to my wife was I just can't think. Do you think a lot of those things that you were going through, you were just burying and like not really dealing with them or were you dealing with them, but not very well? I think of dealing with them, but not very well. And I think I wasn't dealing with one of them before the next one came along. Okay. Um, so it was just like I've not got, not quite got over one thing. I got back to normal. But something else happened, and something yep. else happened, and gradually everything just got chipped away at me. Mm-hmm. And the worst, I, I got to the point where I, I knew I knew I needed help. Um, I went to the doctors. The doctor gave me some meds, and that that worked for a bit. And then I got to I got to Christmas uh, Christmas 2017, and I, went, and, I and I came off them by accident because I'd, I'd run out at Christmas, and I couldn't yep. get couldn't get couldn't get any. Um, came off the meds by accident. Felt okay, um, but literally did it in one sharp, you know, one day I was on them, the next day I wasn't. And um, gradually over the two months after after Christmas 2017, I went into a, a real downward spiral and I put on a shed load of weight. Like, like, like I was doing a lot of traveling with work and if I was traveling early in the morning, I'd do a little video for my daughter. So yeah. when she woke up, I'd just say, I'm going to see you tonight or I'm not going to see you tonight, etc. And I look back at some of those videos. And I can't even recognize myself. I honestly do not know the pic- that that picture of me yeah. is, just doesn't even look like me. Um, and, and gradually over the course of uh, 2017, I think it was, I, um, I managed to get to, a, get to another point where I was even lower than I was before when I went on the meds. And it just so happened that um, uh, I'd, been off, I'd been off work for, for weeks. And it just so happened that I saw one of your videos pop up on um, Facebook. And the, 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 my, my only saving grace was I didn't think about it. You just did I it. Didn't think, I didn't think about it. I just signed up for it. Um, and I, honestly, it was, um, it was one of the, it was one of the, mo- it was one of the most important things that I've done in my adult life, wow, seeing that and, and actually doing that. That's strong saying that. And uh, so I, I think probably, uh, I mean, it could have been me. It could have been anyone really. It, you know, it, it was just that time, that place, right. That, uh, you know, I popped up, but I think it, it maybe identifies the massive need for structure, for focus, yep. or um, if you like, a reignite, reigniting the fire. Maybe that was in you that was lying dormant in, in you and, and, and maybe just the overwhelming chaos, chaos of life. Uh, and the universe somehow, that's you bumping into me on, on that online thing on Facebook was the universe's way of saying, Hey John, it's time to put some focus back on yourself. Yeah. Would you say that in terms of um, if you if, what would be interesting if you went through all of those problems again today? Yeah. With the way that you are now, how do you think you'd be different? Well, it, what would I, be different? I, it's it's so much easier to cope with stuff. Okay. So, um, so not not the, the, the there was a combination of things that I did at the all at the same time. So. Uh, found um found found you found the dad coach found um uh, a, a more structured way to approach medication uh found um uh, i had, had some real awakenings over the course of, of some talking therapy so i was i was going to lots of counseling i was talking a lot um a lot more than i've ever done um and it's sort of a combination of that and, and exercise and, and all the good stuff that that brings yeah it means it means that right now I've got better coping strategies to be able to deal with stuff that's happening. Like there's been a few things over the last few weeks that have that have obviously affected us all, but there's been other things that have, that have been personal to me, and 
I've, I've talked to my wife about it and said, look, if this, had, if, if this would have happened two years ago, I'd have been in pieces and mm. I wouldn't have been able to cope with it. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's just it's just understanding what's important and what's not, and put and prioritizing things so that you're not you're not sweating the small stuff and even the, even the stuff that's out of your control that might be really really huge. Yeah. If you can't control it, then there's very little point, you know, spending a lot of time dwelling about it. Yeah, and that's very difficult to like if you were trying to tell you the version of you two years ago, that would be very difficult for you to understand that two years ago because, and and we talked about this in the five day challenge last night, and we were talking about the level, the different levels of consciousness in your mind and the different levels of awareness in your mind. Yeah. Someone is almost at rock bottom and it becomes a bit of a world when in life, it's very hard. <laughs> it's very hard. I just dropped and scared the life out of me. Uh, it becomes very hard to, re- to, to, to listen to what any external voices are saying or structure are saying because what you tend to do is go, I don't have the time for this. Well, you know, you know the, the funny, the funny thing is, James. When, when I was at, when I was at my lowest point, I was actually I was I was a leadership development coach. Wow. So I was so I was helping people understand how they could approach things differently and, and thinking about uh, thinking about mindfulness, thinking about listening as a as a as a key skill, thinking about how to communicate with others, and and, and I could do I could do that all day long, but I couldn't hear it. Yeah, I could. I couldn't hear any of the advice that I was giving to other people about how they could, how could, how they could, um, how, how, could, how they could change some of the some of the things that have been instilled since they were since they were young. You know, and my wife said to me um, at the at the time that I was. I, in fact, she's she's she always maintains that I'm I'm good at hiding things. I was an amazing actor, I, absolutely amazing. Wearing the mask. You would not have believed nobody who nobody outside of my outside of my wife and my daughter would have been would have known what was going what was going on. Yeah. And it got to such a point that my wife would um, she would prefer to invite the neighbours around for dinner because she knew that I'd be a different version of me when there were other people there. Wow, that's strong. Uh, and and that is, it's that's 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 difficult to hear. Yeah. When, when somebody turns around and tells you that, then yeah. that, is, that is difficult to hear. And, yeah. And, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't fully understand why she's still here. To be honest. <laughs> well, man, must be doing something right. I think well, most, she, I, I think there's, there's a lot to be said about um, women and how loyal and strong they are and how yeah. much of a positive in, influence they play on bringing their partner to their best version of themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, like Jem brought, brought me out of my hole and made me a better guy, you know, when, when all, all was lost. Um, there is probably only so much that they can take, but you know, there's a lot to be said in terms of how much they support us and how much they're there for us, you know. Um, okay, so, so moving on slowly, I think you've almost kind of like touched on this, but I've kind of written down here, um, how did you kind of fall into that pit? And I think you, you've almost answered that, but then what was, was there a particular turning point in your life or was it a chapter of a period of time or was it just that, that one uh, thing that you that turned things around for you it was it, it was it was realizing that i'd probably been in a been in a job for maybe at least 5 years and like i, w- I worked in the same place for 17 years um, and then we got made redundant and it was it was that that process of understanding that at least the last five of those maybe even longer than that i was just phoning it in i, I wasn't i wasn't i wasn't really enjoying it i wasn't really yeah. doing anything but but because i've been there so long you kind of you get used to not not necessarily avoiding the work but you get used to you get used to doing what you need to do to get by to get the, and the paycheck just comes do you know what i mean so mm-hmm. it um it, it got to the point where i realized i really wasn't happy with what with where i was yeah um and um the decision to 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 not be in that place was actually taken out of my hands because it got made redundant anyway. Yeah. Um, and that was uh, that was when I re- that was almost like the, the the light bulb moment of actually that that thing that I've been doing for ages I don't think that was doing me any good at all. Yeah. But I think I need I think I need to be somewhere else doing something different. Yeah. Um, and that's when um, yeah that's when that that kind of that, like, little turning little, point was for you. Yeah. Job yeah. Role. It's funny how things work out, isn't it? I, you know, when, when I look at my my past and when I left the Royal Marines and, and um, I got a job at local college, 
and uh you know i was there a year and a half um and i like i hated it like with a passion you know i hate the kids <laughs> i might say you know i went from training raw marine recruits or people that were motivated to be there to 16 to 19 year olds that just didn't care didn't want to be there yeah. they just they, you know they weren't interested in learning you know um the, the environment was was like this management for assholes that it just was a negative place to be yeah. and i remember sitting there and looking at my computer and going geez i don't know how i'm gonna do this till i'm 60 65 years old and i was like surely this can't be it. and i remember saying that and then i remember getting suspended the week after for um <laughs> for punching a student out no i didn't for, um, <laughs> no for because i was running a part-time job i like i run um and, and the thing is they knew about this and i was running fitness classes basically you know run a little bit I, I took a 15 grand pay cut to come home and uh we were trying to take every penny possible so you know i was running that little thing there and, and it's funny how that although they tried to pin everything kind of on me um how it proved that i didn't do anything wrong, wrong but that relationship become unworkable so i ended up leaving in the end um and set my, my own business like not having any idea what a biz business was but that suddenly that turning point put me onto this new path of a new chapter to new discoveries and yeah. new focus new ways of thinking and a steep learning curve which set me on the path to personal development really if i, if I think about it mm. And it, you I, and I, I'm interested and fascinated by what you say that where that's come in for you in terms of like leaving that job and that job being made redundant was the game changer. Yep. I think when we're put in, when we are put on in situations of where we face adversity, is when we really start to discover our character and where we discover what we're about and how much fight we've got in us and. Something. Well, do you know, do you know the, 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 there's, there's, there's a second point to that. So, so there's, there's, so there's me understanding that that was my that was my lowest point and getting made redundant and all that sort of stuff. And then I went through a period of, of getting myself to almost back on an even keel. And then the one, one of the moments that just ties into what you were just talking about there is when we when we did um, when I did train like a marine, and I came down and you. That was a big thing for you, wasn't it? You you we did two days of of physical. Almost not torture, but it wasn't far off. It was torture. Um, <laughs> but um, but that that physical adversity and going through that, and 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 I don't know where we were in 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 the in the program, but you told me that I was resilient because of what I was doing and how I was doing it. You told me I was resilient, and that has that flicked a switch in my head, uh, and 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 it's like right, okay, well if he thinks I'm resilient, maybe I am. Um, and uh, you know, I've got that. I, I have that going through my head quite a lot. Yeah. Um, that, uh, that 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 just gives me a, a bit of reassurance when I'm faced with a difficult situation. And just thinking, actually, you know, I am resilient, and and I can get through it. And yeah, you know, I, might able, I might not know what I'm doing right now, but I, I'll work it out. But this is what I try and tell people: is that I feel that people have to embrace the process to discover themselves. To discover yeah. what they're capable of, to discover discover their conditioning of their mind, of their emotional state, of their physical state, so that when we are yeah. in the face in life, we we're conditioned to take that punch, we're conditioned yeah. to suck it up, make a decision, like based on our future, based on common sense, rather than acting irrationally and stressed, and and I think. It, resilience is a large part of life and uh, you know we everybody wants to look better everyone wants a quick process everyone wants it tomorrow but when you want it quick and you take shortcuts and you you take the easy road you don't learn anything about yourself you don't go through the hardship to make yourself more resilient yeah you know what i mean and this is where so many people and we sort of diverse in slowly here but like when people try and lose their body fat and they go to is it Herbalife or Juice Plus and all of those things where, yeah, you lose loads of weight after four years, four months, real quick or four weeks or whatever it is, but really, really fast results. They're not sustainable. Yeah. And when you don't follow the process in depth and you dig deep into yourself, you don't build up any resilience. So when temptation comes your way, you suddenly all go cake, 
beer, booze, mm-hmm. you coming out. We, pe- those people who want the quick fix and take the quick fix option, they break really yeah. quick. The people that work hard on themselves and almost have to take the hard route become much more fulfilled, much more, um, they're gonna have much more longevity in their journey, in their process. Yeah. And it becomes a lot more focused on resilience-based action. Mm-hmm. Well, we're, we're, I'm, I'm in a place now where my wife said to me, who knew that, um, who knew that um, structure and routine was your superpower? Yeah. You know, just being able to get rid of, get rid of all the little points in time where I've got, a, I've got a choice to make about doing something or not, some, not doing something, removing all those yeah. on the following day as much as possible so yeah. that I don't have to think about should I go for a run or not? Yeah. Should I, what, what should I eat? Or, or should, I, should I have a packet of crisps or should I have an apple? Or, you know, what should I have for my lunch? Yeah. All, all those little decision points, they're all little, little points at which you can choose something crap or choose something to do, just choose the wrong thing to do. 100%. So prepping meals, prepping your food, prepping, getting your kit ready for the following morning, making sure that you've got a routine, making sure you know what you're doing, where you're going, who are you going to talk to, how are you going to be, and just all the, all the thinking that you can do prior to something happening yeah, is, is, is massively important. 100%. I, I completely not agree. And, and somebody said to me last night on the five day, he goes, they said, you're super positive in a time of chaos. And, I, and, and, and how I justify this, if you imagine, you can see my square here of where my head is and my, and my profile. If you imagine that the world, and then you look at my eye here, this is my little life here. And in this bubble here is everything that I can focus on and that I'm in control of. Mm-hmm. This little bubble and this space here is my family, is my customers, my clients, okay, my friends, my family. That, you know, I can only control what's in here. Yeah. The problem that people have is that they start worrying about what's happening all around here. Okay, yeah. all of these external influences that they can't influence, but yet it's having a major effect. I don't watch the news. I, I don't watch the news per se anymore mm-hmm. at all. I only rely on my partner to tell me what's going on, okay? I just simply focus on my world, my bubble, what I can control. Yep. And, to, and the biggest split for the majority of people and the people that are panicking about the situation, and, it, and it's horrendous. People die all the time, and it's terrible that people are dying. But I can't do anything about that. All I can do is be in here. This is my 1%, right? Listening to what they're saying. I can't go around and doing anything. I can support the NHS workers, I can support what the government are asking me to do. I can support my clients throughout everything that's going on. But apart from that, I can't do anything else. Mm-hmm. And I think when people can find control measures and understand the things that they can control and spend their time and their energy on the things that are in their grasp, rather than worrying about everything that's happening all around this world here, then you have a lot more clarity about where you are in your life, a lot more control and then consistency of action. And that's where what you're talking about, you come through. Yeah. yeah. And you can let a lot of things go, Mm. you know, and and it's such a liberating, such a liberating feeling. I mean, I, 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 I had, um, I can think of one particular individual that caused me a lot of stress and a lot of, and a lot of pain. Um, and I carried that around for years. I I carried that around for years and it, and it, and it was, and it was, it was a awful thing inside me that just, I constantly go back to it. I couldn't control it. There was nothing I could do about it. And I actually made a conscious choice at one point when I was doing some some thinking about where where I was, um, just to let it go. And it was it was like a like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Easy to it's easy to say. It's more difficult to think about and get to that point where you understand what you're doing. But just let it let the stuff that you can't control go because there's sound like Elsa from Frozen now. <laughs> I guarantee watch it at least three times a day. So, I've been I've been through all that. I've let been it go. Through all that. Yeah, it's, let it go. Uh, You're absolutely right, though. You've got to, and having the ability to let go of what is not in your control, yeah, is one of the biggest things you can leverage on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Let's move on. We made a point. What did you believe back then? What were your beliefs compared to now? Uh, my beliefs. My beliefs got all clouded and muddled and, 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 and unclear. So I was always quite sure that I was quite fit and healthy and, uh, and kind of knew what I was about. And then I went through a big, a, a real 
a good few years of just getting all that completely confused and not really understanding whether that was true or not. Um, and now I've got to the point where, yeah, I understand, I understand physically more about myself and I understand a lot more about myself mentally. Um, and it's not that far away from where I was in 20, 2011. Do you know what I mean? In, 20, in, 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 uh, in 2009 and all that, that period there. There's a good few years that I've lost completely. Well, I see. Now, you say that. Now, I look at the three years I was in my rut and I think, well, I lost them. But did I lose them or did I learn from them to be where I am now? If well, I didn't do those three years, yeah, yeah. Have, would I be where I am now? And I think every man that has gone through a bad chapter, you, me, everyone else that has ever had a story, it, def it either defines you yeah. or it kills you. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not saying, so I'm not saying they weren't useful because they, no. they have got me to where I am. I get when it. I, when, I was, when I was trying to work out, because I'm sitting down and thinking about my story, I'm trying to think, right, well, what happened in what order? Uh, and the, the, there's two or three years in there. I can't, I can, stuff I can't remember. Yeah, I get it. Um, all gets me to where I am now, and that's all cool. But, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a big gap in, in, some of my, uh, in some of my recent times. But, yeah, I think I've got back to where I was, and, and I'm probably better than I was. I, I agree 100%. From the first, I remember some of the phone calls we did, you know, and like, you know, real just being lost, right? Yeah, absolutely. Didn't know. Didn't know. And you don't even have to, really, you're one of our ambassadors now for the mastermind and, and, and all the guys coming on our programs and stuff. So, like, I know you've got it dialed in, like, which is why you're an ambassador. Like, you don't rely necessarily, like, like, like me, I like to listen to maybe one or two people who pick me up when I need it online. I think that's all you need sometimes you just because you're there now yeah, yeah it's it's part of your dna it's part of your blood it's part of your life yeah. it's a lifestyle change which which is great to see but it does take time it does like, it takes time except for me i honestly feel it takes people a year yeah I'd i probably agree with that, with that. I, I think to get to a good basic level of consistency with control measures of your time and your energy and having that complete clarity on the path that you're on, mm -hmm. it takes a year. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start selling a 365 day year. <laughs> I'd be mega quiet. It's hard though, but it's the truth. Yeah. All right. Um, you might be repeating yourself here slightly, but give me two of your biggest changes. What has changed in the last three years? Your two biggest things that have helped you make that change. Uh, get up and exercise before anybody else in the house gets up right a absolutely C cannot advocate that more um, okay. if you're going to do something get up and do it um and <clears throat> um i think it was one of, it was one of, one of your mates james i saw him on a video i can't remember who it was he said you can you can always control what goes in your mouth and you control what you do with your feet right um, so, yeah i think so yeah so you can, if you can control those two things, then you can manage everything else that goes on in between physically. Yeah, man. I like that. So, quick fire question. <laughs> Go on. You've got two seconds to answer. Yeah. Okay. Nothing outrageous in here. What makes you happy? Family. What makes you sad? Uh, pain. Pain. What makes you angry? Um, people that don't give a shit. Fight or flight? Fight. Biggest ambition in life? Uh, to be alive for my grandkids. Oof, Mike. What percentage are you running at today? Uh, 90. Woo! A final message to anyone listening. Um, I hope you found this useful you're not on your own if, if you think you are then just reach out i i was amazed at the amount of people that that, that said oh, I've, I've actually been on meds myself and i've been amazed at people that think i'm, I'm i didn't i didn't realize i was the only I, i'm not the only person that thought that, 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 that thinks like this and you're not on meds anymore are you no i came off in uh anyway. um, june i think june oh i knew it'd be um, a day so um we're, I'm, I'm all good from that point of view and, and not miss them to be fair. Did you come off for a bit on a January and then go back on? Oh, I, yeah. I, well, that was it. I, I came off. I came off because I forgot to take them. Was it January I, last I, year? It was because I, I remember the conversation. Yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Okay, that's fine. Hey, thank you for coming on. Uh, I really right, appreciate. Yeah, I really hope this offers some value to somebody. Um, yeah. I 
we're going to end this and then we're going to chat afterwards. Cool. No worries. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thanks for listening. Um, I hope you found this valuable. It's going to be on our podcast. It's a state of mind. Um, it's also going to be on our YouTube channel, James Boardman. So please do dig out, have a look uh, and have a great day. Boom, 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 two seconds. Are you still there? How was that? All right? You enjoyed that? Yeah. yeah. It's, all, it's all good talking about my, uh, talking about what's happened. It makes it, it just makes you realise how far you've come. Mate, and that's why I'm encouraging so <laughs> many people to do it. Because when you reflect on your story and you're talking about it, oh, let me just turn this off.